Ships are an incredible part of all navies around the world. They let Navy troops control important sea lanes, making sure that military personnel can get to their destination safely. As an important part of keeping the sea safe, they defend against strikes from enemy ships. Many times, ships are used by the Navy to do amphibious tasks, like moving troops and supplies from the sea to the land. Ships also play a vital role in providing maritime security, including countering any attacks from enemy ships. Navy forces often use ships to carry out amphibious missions, including the movement of troops and equipment from sea to land. The versatility and mobility of Navy ships also makes them responsible for responding to any natural disasters. Many naval ships, such as aircraft carriers and amphibious assault ships, serve as platforms for naval aviation. These ships extend the reach and capabilities of aircraft, enabling them to operate over vast oceanic areas. This is the HSV-2 Swift. It's a commercial catamaran equipped with an aluminum hull that can go through waves easily. It's been upgraded for military use with a communication suite, a helicopter flight deck, a vehicle deck, and the ability to launch and retrieve small boats and unmanned vehicles. The ship's new modular design allows it to be repaired easily and deployed back without having to spend a lot of time in the shipyard. A catamaran is normally known as a watercraft with two hulls of equal size attached parallel to each other. Typically, catamarans have much less hull volume, smaller displacement, and a shallower draft than monohulls of the same size. The HSV-2 measures about 321 feet long with a beam of 88 feet and a draft of 11 feet. It gets its power from four Caterpillar 3618 maritime diesel engines, which give it the ability to travel up at a maximum speed of 45 knots. However, it's mostly operated at 30 knots. The ship has an empty displacement of 955 tons and a full load displacement of 1,695 tons. From the front, the boat looks like a trimaran, but the middle hull isn't in the water and isn't used to float. The ship's only used for logistics, so it doesn't have any watertight sections or weapon systems. The ship moves with the help of directional water jets, so it doesn't need engines or a rudder to steer. The high-speed vessel, or HSV, was based at Naval Amphibious Base Little Creek in Norfolk, Virginia, where she was chartered as an MSC or Military Sealift Command ship. The ship had two Conmar teams that switched places every three months so that the ship could be used 11 months a year. Conmars are essential personnel that ensure that the operation of the fleet goes as smoothly as possible. The HSV-2 can carry a minimum crew number of 35 people. During her time on the MSC, 18 of the crew members were military and the rest were civilians hired through the American Maritime Officers and Seafarers International Union of the United States Merchant Marine. The only time that the HSV-2 was seen in an American port was when she was helping the 4th Fleet at Naval Station Mayport, Florida, or when she was getting important repairs done in Charleston, South Carolina. The United States Navy leased the ship from Inket of Lockport, Louisiana, which is located in Lockport, Louisiana. The ship was built by the Australian shipyard Inket in Hobart, Tasmania. The United States Navy leased her as the second catamaran in order to test new technology and ideas that were related to the Sea Power 21 plan that was developed by the Chief of Naval Operations. The Sea Power 21 plan was launched in 2003 by the United States to enhance the flexibility and agility of the Navy in order to effectively counter any threats that they may face in the future. The HSV-2 Swift was constructed under the Joint High-Speed Vessel, or JHSV, program. At the time, she was privately owned and operated by Sealift Incorporated. As part of the initiative, she was immediately leased for evaluation from her builders by the United States Navy Military Sealift Command from 2003 until 2013. Her primary purpose was to serve as a sea basing and mine countermeasures test platform. Later on in her formal Navy career, she was primarily utilized for operations including partnering with humanitarian organizations and fleet assistance. The catamaran is equipped with a Mine Countermeasure Squadron Staff Designed Command and Control Facility. It provides commercial and military satellite communications and has all digital switch transceivers allowing for communications. The main deck has a combat information center with workstations and tactical displays 
a mission planning and post-mission analysis room, a conferencing facility, and manned equipment space. It also has a 700-foot upper C4ISR room and a 200-foot lower C4I equipment room supply. It also features 70 kilowatts for electrical and climatic control requirements. The ship has a multi-compartment and an equipment room connected to the command center configurable to allow five independent missions. The vessel also comes with two marine escaping systems consisting of 17M inflatable slides with Solos APAC life rafts for a total capacity of 500 people. The HSV X-1 was the first ship of this class to be used by the Navy. She showed her combat strength during the invasion of Iraq in 2003 by serving as a staging area for Marine Fleet Anti-Terrorism and U.S. Navy SEAL teams in the shallow waters of Umkasar, Iraq. In the future, the Navy planned to use what it had learned from SWIFT and the ship that came before it to make a new type of littoral combat vessel. As part of the 5th Fleet in the fall of 2003, SWIFT made the fastest ever trip across the northern Great Barrier Reef, going from Cairns to Booby Island, Australia at just over 39 knots. It was 43 knots of wind during flight deck certifications for Swift's crew to recover an airplane at one point, and 66 knots of wind during another. She started the West African Training Cruise 4 in November of 2003. On November 3rd, 2003, she went to the South African Navy base in Durban for the first time. After that, she worked out with the SAN and the South African Air Force near Simonstown in the Western Cape. A report in Jane's Defense Weekly on November 19, 2003, said the drills were also planned with Cameroon, Gambia, Ghana, Morocco, Senegal, and Sierra Leone as of early November 2003. Swift brought along a small group of U.S. Marines for the cruise, which will use equipment from the Norway Air Landed Marine Expeditionary Brigade for the exercise. The article in Jane's Defense Weekly said that Marine reservists would practice with NOMS, or the Norway Air Landed Marine Expeditionary Brigade gear, and the crews would also be used to test a new, lighter ROPU that the USMC Warfighting Laboratory was working on at the time. The ship came back in early 2004, during the multinational drill RIMPAC in 2004, the U.S. Navy put the SWIFT, which was built in Australia, to the test. In January 2005, SWIFT was tasked to help the logistics during the North Sumatra tsunami relief attempt. On January 3, 2005, SWIFT left Naval Station Ingleside in Texas. SWIFT was in Pearl Harbor on January 15, 2005, on its way to help people who had been hurt by the earthquake. On January 30, 2005, the ship arrived in Singapore. On February 3, 2005, it arrived at Belawan, Indonesia. On February 7, 2005, it arrived in Sadahip, Thailand. Before going to the area hit by the tsunami, teams were switched at Pearl Harbor. In less than eight hours, the Gold Crew took over for the Blue Crew, Swift took on a helicopter mission and was the home base for two helicopters and their crews for 30 days straight at sea. As part of the action, Swift sailed non-stop for 30 days, helped the helicopter detachment and support crew, and did two underway resupplies. Swift was incredibly important in helping people after Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Most of the roads along the Gulf Coast were closed, so Swift and her crew had to bring the supplies by water. They did this by crossing the Mississippi River more than once while carrying humanitarian aid from Pensacola, Florida to New Orleans, Louisiana. SWIFT was also used to carry humanitarian aid materials from Cyprus to Beirut during the 2006 Israel-Lebanon conflict. On April 25, 2007, SWIFT left Naval Station Mayport, Florida to become a global fleet station. During its 12 trips to seven countries including Belize, the Dominican Republic, Guatemala, Honduras, Jamaica, Nicaragua, and Panama. The ship hosted more than 1,000 military and civilian people from the host country. People on board SWIFT had 39,890 hours of expert-to-expert -expert conversations in these countries about things like leadership, small boat operations, port security, and small unit tactics. The six-month U.S. Navy-funded GFS deployment 
tested the Navy's GFS IDEA, which is a maritime security cooperation program meant to improve partnerships around the world through training and working together. SWIFT took U.S. military training teams to train with civil and maritime forces in the region on the high seas. A lot of food and medical materials weighing over 20,000 pounds were sent through Project Handclasp during the last half of the deployment. The SWIFT had many important guests over, such as the Prime Minister of Jamaica and the U.S. ambassadors to Panama, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Honduras, and Jamaica. The GFS pilot mission was completed on September 30, 2007, when SWIFT returned to Naval Station Mayport, Florida. SWIFT left Naval Station Mayport on May 5, 2010, with other Navy and Marine Corps units on board for a five-month mission to Southern Partnership Station 2010. SWIFT got 140 Project Handclasp boxes and two fire trucks while it was in port. The Wisconsin National Guard State Partnership Program gave the fire trucks to Project Handclasp so that they could be sent to Nicaragua, which is their partner country. Project Handclasp is a program run by the U.S. Navy that takes in and sends educational, humanitarian, and charity materials to other countries as long as there's room on U.S. Navy ships. SPS is a yearly deployment of different types of specialty platforms to the Caribbean and Latin America, which is part of the U.S. Southern Command's area of responsibility. The main goal of the operation is to share information with the region's navies, coast guards, and civilian services. In April 2013, the back of SWIFT was used to test a TIF 25K tethered aerostat, which is an automated blimp. The aerostat could be put 3,000 feet above the ship to keep an eye on it. When the USNS Spearhead came into service, it was going to take the place of SWIFT. The vessel was first chartered in July of 2003 as an interim mine warfare command and support ship for transformational mine warfare modular mission payload projects. Within a year, it had been sent to the North Sea, the Persian Gulf, South Africa, and Hawaii. The Gulf of Mexico, Singapore, Thailand, Sicily, Spain, and Southern California were some of the other places that they were seen. As the mine demonstration missions were over, SWIFT was used for partnership tasks that took it on long cruises to Africa, the Caribbean, Central and South America, and other countries. The ship's charter for another five years was extended in 2008, and it continued to do its job until joint high-speed vessels came out. SWIFT's time with Military Sealift Command came to an end in 2013. SWIFT went back to Inkit at Hobart in July 2013 to be fixed up so that it could be sold or rented. The National Maritime Dredging Company of the UAE was said to be running the ship in July of 2015. As part of the Saudi-led operation in Yemen, the ship went through the Bab al-Mandeb Strait carrying people supplies, and injured people. On October 1st, 2016, the rebel Houthis, who were backed by Iran, said they had attacked and sunk the Swift off the coast of Yemen, near the Bab al-Mendeb Strait. However, there were no injuries in what the UAE military called an incident involving Swift. The UAE military said that Swift was carrying aid when it was attacked, and that the ship itself did not have any combat power. At dawn on October 1, 2016, Saudi Arabia said that their troops had saved people from a damaged UAE ship. There are different stories about whether she was on her way to Aden, which is a common location, or Makkah when she was attacked. The attack was said to have used four shoulder-fired rockets by unnamed U.S. defense officials, but Houthi said it was a C-802 NOR anti-ship missile. Open source naval analyst and former Navy captain Chris Carlson says that Swift was hit by an EPP warhead, most likely a C-802. This is based on the shrapnel damage that she sustained. U.S. Navy destroyers named the USS Mason and the USS Nitsi and an amphibious transport dock, USS Ponce, were dispatched to the area to ensure that the shipping process goes smoothly. However, Despite the significant damage it had endured, 
Later reports showed the HSV-2 Swift afloat in a Greek port in 2017 with damages to the port bow. Currently, the vessel is owned by the Greek ferry company Seat Jets and stays afloat. Throughout its career and lifespan with the United States Navy, it was able to carry many types of people to many different locations all around the world, from humanitarian aid to cargo runs, all the way down to military tactics and operational drills. The Swift was a cornerstone of the HSV program for the United States Navy, and while it may have sustained additional damage, at least we can rest comfortable in the knowledge that it remains in active service on the open seas. And that brings us to the end of our video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you're intrigued by this kind of content, make sure you show your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to turn the bell notification on so you're updated as soon as new content has been released. Thanks for watching everybody, we'll see you in the next video.